Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to this broadcast from First Baptist Church in Rock Hill. I'm Steve Hogg, Senior Pastor, and I'm so excited you are worshiping the Lord Jesus with us today. You are honored to hear a message from a friend of mine, Brother Cedric Maddox, who is the founding pastor of Refreshing Word Church in Fort Mill, South Carolina. He and I first met about two years ago and have really enjoyed becoming friends, brothers not only in Christ but in ministry, and I know you're going to be blessed by him. As soon as I pray, Cedric is going to then share God's word. Father in heaven, thank you for this day, a day you have created, an opportunity for us to pause from the busyness of life and worship you to worship King Jesus. And I pray that you would use the message Brother Cedric is preaching to speak to each and every heart, to change each and every life. May Jesus be honored we love you, and we pray your blessings on this message. In Jesus' name, amen. So, Father God, we pray even right now in the name of Jesus. Ears to hear, hearts to receive, minds to understand. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We appreciate your presence and your Shekinah glory. Do that which you will in Jesus' name. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. I want to lift a few selected verses in your hearing. Beginning at verse number 3. Ephesians 1. If you there, say, I got it. There we go. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, and just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Family and friends, sons and daughters of the Most High God, I, I want to talk to us about being chosen. Chosen. Especially this time of the year, it's great to be chosen. We want to be chosen because it's Christmas time. And we want someone to choose to bless us with Christmas gifts. Now, if you were, if you are or were like me in my high school days, around Christmas time, you break up. <laughs> Simply because you didn't have enough money <clears throat> to show someone that they were chosen. But the good thing about God is that he chooses us regardless. God chooses us regardless of our status, our gender, our station, or our education. He chooses us. There are no stragglers with God. There are no outcasts with God. We are all in the family of God. And we are all chosen to be his. As a matter of fact, not only does God not care about what your uh, makeup is, God does not care about how you think you may identify yourself. Because he has chosen us and chosen you to identify in him. 
What's so good about God is that God chooses you right where you are. You don't have to change to be chosen of God. When we look at the Christmas passage of Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14, God chose the shepherds. He chose to reveal himself to a group of men who were the outcast of society, the lowest on the totem pole. Nobody wanted to deal with them. They actually didn't smell too nice because they were around sheep all the time. And they are actually working or living out in the field. When God shows up with a messenger to say, I bring you, if you will, good tidings about great joy. And then God is so good to the shepherds, as I said, to the last two audiences, he puts on a free concert because the heavenly hosts show up and they begin to sing. I mean, can you imagine that? That the heavenly host, the best choir in all of creation shows up in a field. In a field, no doubtedly, spotted with sheep. Not only spotted with sheep, but you got to get this. Sheep are animals. Animals do not have the same cognizant ability that we have to go to the bathroom. So out here are these shepherds who are standing in a field and all of a sudden, glory shows up. That's how much God chooses you and I. God doesn't wait till we get into the right space or place. God comes to the space and place we are already at. And he shows up with his glory. And so with that being said, it is my desire to share with you today for a brief few moments on what it is to be chosen. What it is to be the chosen of God. With your prayers and certainly with the aid of the Holy Spirit, I want to share from this topic, chosen child. Chosen child. When you look back at the sanctified text of Ephesians, I mean, really, we got to get this. Paul is talking to this church that is pretty much on the outskirts, but he's given them an idea of what it means to be chosen. Ladies and gentlemen, sons and daughters, you, you got you to understand the faith is fairly new at this time. Christendom has not been established. That doesn't come into, until hundreds of years later with Constantine that we have the established church. No, right now, he is telling some individuals that they have been chosen. And they've been chosen despite the fact that everything that they believe in is outside of cultural norms. And so with that being said, he's given them the idea that in this choosing, you get to be a part of God's family. You get to be a part of what it means to have God's presence. Now, there's some things that go along with this. There's some points I want to make, and then I'm going to bid you a good day. Number one, when you are chosen, you are supremely favored. Yes, you're favored by God. Number two, when you are chosen, you are divinely selected. God picks you out. Number three, when you are chosen by God, 
then God takes the time to sovereignly will his presence to you. And then number four, when you're chosen, you have been certified. Certified. Now, the interesting thing, something just popped in my mind while I was thinking about this, while I was talking up here, and that is about being chosen, right? I don't know how it is today. I mean, I have two sons, 22 and 20. So that ought to tell you I'm, I have a little age on me, plus the gray helps. But I used to hate when it was time to go to like a school dance or something. Because you're just really wondering, is anybody going to choose to go with you? Right? I mean, trust me, ladies, guys, we hate asking sometimes. Because we don't want to be told no. You think it's hard for us, I mean, for you to, to be asked, it's hard for us to ask. Because it's still about choice. Can I tell you something embarrassing? I am, I'm gonna tell you something embarrassing. As I set this up, about being chosen, do you realize that the reason why I did not go to my senior prom when I was in high school was because I was not chosen? Yep. Didn't go. Didn't go. My grandmother who raised me, she said, well, aren't you going to at least just go because it is your senior year? I'm like, nah, that's all right. I got turned down. I got turned down. I'm not putting on no text and driving up there by myself. I refuse. Today is chic, right? Because both my sons, that's what they did. I think it's because I bought them a Camaro, so. <laughs> yeah, they had a 95 Camaro. T-top, by, by the way. Yeah, yeah, you couldn't tell those dudes nothing. So anyway, bottom line is, is that, <laughs> the bottom line is, is that that's how much it hurts when we think we're rejected. We would avoid situations and circumstances, but I'm here to tell all of us today, you're chosen. You're so chosen that God supremely favored you. In verse three, he says, I blessed you with every spiritual blessing. I love that. I love that. Every time I say it, I get hyped up. Why? Because what God is saying is that you are blessed. You are favored. I favored you. I, the word literally means I'm causing you to prosper with every spiritual blessing. Are you understanding that? That means we may not prosper with things, but we prosper in spirit. Oh, my God. The more mature I get, the less I want things. I get tired of taking care of stuff. I don't know if, if any of you feel that, but you just get tired of having all this stuff. And, and then when you get this stuff, yeah, it looks nice when you first get it, but then the bill comes. <laughs> or the maintenance. Right? One of the things I loved about when I gave my boys the 9 to 5 Camaro is that we actually could go under the hood and fix it. The car I drive now, I can't even touch the engine. It's encased. And that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that, but God gives us something that, guess what? Number one, it never breaks down. Number two, there's more than enough to go around. Number three, you can call on it any time you want it. God says, I supremely favored you. I caused you to prosper. How? In every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Now, when I thought about the heavenly places, here's what I thought about. I thought about that God sits, that Jesus sits on the right hand of God. 
So these heavenly places in Christ means is that it's right there at the Father's hand that you have every blessing. Oh my goodness. Every blessing of joy, every blessing of peace, every blessing of contentment, every blessing of hope, every blessing of faithfulness, every blessing of love, you have it. You have been favored that even if you don't get anything under the tree, you got everything in your soul. My God. Let's be honest. Half the stuff under the tree, you don't want it there anyway. I mean, tell the truth and shame the devil. Come on, come on, come on. Tell, 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 tell the truth and shame the devil. Half the stuff that is going to be given in this season, you're going to put it in a closet so you can re-gift it later and give it to somebody else. Or you want the receipt so you can take it back to the store. Right? I mean, you can tell the truth. You can tell the truth. All right, you don't want to tell the truth because you're sitting beside the person who's going to give it to you. <laughs> but God favored you and I in such a way. He chose you. He chose you not because you were good. He chose you not because of anything exterior, not because you were pretty enough, not because you were cool enough, not because you had enough money. He simply chose you. And when he did, he supremely favored you. But then number two, he divinely selected you out of the crowd. Yeah, he selected you. Hey, look, verse four says, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Look. At the end of the day, God selected you. And he selected you without TikTok. He selected you without IG. He selected you without any of that stuff. God just simply said, you know what? I love him. I love him. You didn't have to come up with the latest TikTok dance. What trips me out is all the combinations. I mean, I came up during the day that it was just cool if you had a two-step. And you know what else? Here's the deal. It's so much pressure that we put on ourselves with that stuff. But God, in his almighty sovereignty and benevolence, he says, let me take all the pressure off. I select you. I'm taking you to the dance. I'm taking you to the party. No matter what. I select you. Wow. Think about that. I selected you before the foundation of the world. Before time ever was, I already made a choice. What? You mean, God, you chose me even though you knew that I would trip on you? Yes, I chose you. Wow. God says, I chose you. Why? I love it that God doesn't choose perfect kids. God chooses kids he loves perfectly. Let that sink, let that sink in. God doesn't choose you because you're perfect. He doesn't choose you because you got it together. He doesn't choose you because of your station in life. He doesn't choose you because of the money you're gonna make. He doesn't choose you because you're smart. He doesn't choose you because you're beautiful. Because you know what? If any of us understand things, here's one of the things I teach my boys all the time. I say, look, You know what? Don't waste money or time. If you're going to waste one, waste money because you can make that back. Money comes and goes. We don't know what will happen in our life that calls us to go from rich to being poor. We have no earthly clue. Right. Beauty fades. Let's just be 100 percent honest and real. You know, some of us will talk about our heyday and how we used to look back in that day. I remember when my waist size was a 28. I won't tell you what it is now. So God didn't choose me because I would look like, you know, a fitness model. God didn't choose me because I was tall. He didn't choose me because I was short. He didn't choose me because of the color of my skin. God simply chose me because I'm his creation. 
And God divinely selects every one of us. None of us have a qualification that says that we should be selected because the Bible says that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So nobody can sit here and claim, well, this is the reason why he saved me. No, God simply saves you because he loves you. I share it one more time. Look, there is this there. My, my mother in law has a beautiful, cute little puppy. And at the end of the day, well, she's small dog. Let me say that she has a lap dog. Right. And she was beautiful and white and all of this great stuff. And over the years, she's developed symptoms and sicknesses. And the latest thing we found out is that she has anxiety. How a dog has anxiety, I don't know. <laughs> no, what's even more, what's even more. You really want to know something? How they tell? <laughs> How can you tell if a dog has anxiety? Anyway. <laughs> Chloe is beautiful in my mother-in-law's eyes. She is. She's got about three or four dog beds depending on how she feels tonight. She has two strollers. <laughs> Chloe got it going on. And my mother-in-law just dotes on Chloe. Let me put the cookies on the bottom shelf. With all of your hangs up, hang-ups and make-ups, mess-ups, I'm sorry. God still dotes on you. God still looks at you and God says, that's my son. That's my daughter. And I love them. And the beautiful thing is, is that God says, I chose you to be what? Holy and blameless. Mm. Holy and blameless. Literally, God says, <laughs> I see you as I created you, not as you are. Is that, is, is that all right? Is that all right? I mean, God says, look, you can do all of the crap you want to do, and I still choose to see you as holy. Not that I like it, but it just is what it is. You're holy. You're blameless. In Christ, if you receive my son Jesus, you're holy and you're blameless. I love you that much that I see you that way. So I have selected you to be holy and blameless. And then he says, he says, now, this is my point three. You're sovereignly willed. Sovereign. That means God reigns supreme, sovereignly willed. Look, you know what? We can't even imagine how supreme God is, right? He's so supreme that even supreme doesn't seem supreme when we say supreme, because God is so supreme. I mean, there's not one molecule one atom that can move without the power of God saying so. My God. Think about that. The dust in the air, the molecules in the air cannot float unless God says so. And God says, I have willed that you will be filled with my presence despite everything else. I give you peace in the midst of your problems. I give you joy no matter how much junk is going on around you. I give you love no matter how much you feel like you're alone. I am God and I have willed this for you. You can't lose. 
So if you were like me, you stayed up last night trying to see who was going to be in the playoffs, watching college football. And then, of course, they always play the chaos game, right? Should Notre Dame get in? I don't know. They never accepted a two-loss team and all this kind of stuff. <sighs> you know what's so wonderful about God? God doesn't care how many losses you have. You're already in. That's what it means to be sovereignly willed. There's not a, there's not a committee of angels sitting around trying to choose whether or not you're going to go. Right? There's just simply the Lord Jesus Christ who says, Yes to you. Last point, and I'm out of here. And that is you're certified. Certified. What does it mean to be certified? It means to have the official trademark on. It means to be stamped and approved. Right? That's what it means. Certified. I don't know how much it is today. Um, jerseys, jerseys. Anybody have an official jersey, whether it's NFL, NBA? You know, you got an official jersey, right? It is certified, right? Using that as an example, using that as an example. I mean, you got to think that they charge hundreds of dollars for this jersey. Hundreds. It's just a shirt. I mean, come on. All right, another example, right? When you see Air Jordan, okay? It could be the ugliest shoe in the world, but if it got that mark on it, somehow he can charge $250. Are you with me? Okay. I'm gonna flash back for him, Steve. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna take some of us back. I remember when Jordan's jeans were the bomb. <laughs> oh, you had to have a members only jacket. Anybody want to go with me? Okay. And when I think about it today, they were just regular jeans. There was nothing special about them. They just happened to have Jordan's on them. When I think about it today, it was just a regular jacket that someone had taken the time to sew a tag that said members only, and that certified it, right? And I just remember just begging my parents to get me that jacket. I had to have members only, right? I guess North Face is kind of taking the place of that now. It just gotta read North Face. Look, man, you're just trying to stay warm, okay? But we want something certified. We want that. Well, here's what I stopped by to tell you today. The blood has certified you. You're all that to God in a bag of chips simply because of the blood. You are certified. Now, how did God pay for it? He paid for it with the blood of Jesus Christ. And there's an empty grave as the receipt. So you got a receipt to show that you're certified. And the good thing is, <laughs> there is absolutely nothing and no one that can take it back. Come on, tell the truth. I'm, I'm, I'm just about finished. Come on, tell the truth. No, seriously, seriously, tell the truth. Some of us get gift receipts and receipts of the stuff you bought so that when you give it to the person, they can take it back to the store. And that's why we hold on to the receipt. But the receipt that we have is not so that it can be taken back, but it's so that we can go forward. Closing the antidote. So when it comes to Chloe, 
my mother-in-law's dog, Chloe is a certified member of the family. Chloe is in the wheel. There are instructions by the door, just in case first responders have to come in, that they must take care of Chloe. Right? All of this is for Chloe. But can I tell you something? Chloe doesn't have a drop of my mother-in-law's blood in her. But Chloe is still family. She's family because of love. Ladies and gentlemen, sons and daughters, God chooses you to be his child simply because of love. That's it. Simply because of love. And with that, I would like to close and say this. Will you receive the love of God? That's the question. Because no matter how much God has done, he can stand arms open. But we leave God hanging. It's one of the worst feelings in the world, isn't it? You walk up to somebody and you're like this. You want to give them a big hug or the bro shake. But that person leaves you hanging. As much as God has chosen you, you still have to choose God. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless you, O oh Lord, for this time together. Thank you, God, for just your word going forth. I ask you even now, help us to make the choice because you've already chosen us. Some of us are choosing you for the very first time. In other words, we just want to be loved by you. We just want to understand what that is. And so we want to be saved. Some of us are choosing, choosing you because we realize that we walked away. So we're rededicating ourselves. And then some of us just need to choose you in a given situation to do it your way, not ours. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.